In this video, we're going to learn about the observer pattern. When I first saw the observer pattern, I had no idea how it worked until I looked under the hood and it's actually quite simple and very useful. So what is the observer pattern? The observer is an object or the subject that maintains a list of dependents or observers and notifies them when state changes, usually by calling a broadcast method. The browser's event target .add event listener is an example of the observer pattern. So when you get a DOM element and then add an event listener, say click, and then you'll add a callback function. So when the event listener sees a click function, it's going to call the callback function. RxJS also uses observables quite extensively. So you can see here we have our subject and our subject maintains a list of subscribers. We also have a subscribe method so we can update our subscribers list. We also have an unsubscribe method so we can update our subscriber list again. And then we have a broadcast method. And the broadcast method is going to broadcast the update out to all the observables. In this video, we're going to build an observable with a class, and then we're going to use that observable. And then we're going to build the same observable with a function because functions are much better than classes. And in my opinion, you shouldn't be using classes where you can use functions in JavaScript. And then finally, we're going to see a practical example of where you might use observables. So the first thing we need to do to create our observable is to create a class. So I'm going to say class observable. And inside of the constructor, we're going to have a list of subscribers. So I'm going to say this dot subscribers is equal to an empty array. The first method we're going to have is the subscribe method that is going to update the list of subscribers. I'm going to say subscribe. And our subscribe method is going to take a function. And then we're going to say this dot subscribers dot push. And we're just going to push our function onto the subscriber list. The next method we're going to have is an unsubscribe method. So I'm going to say unsubscribe. Unsubscribe is also going to take a function. And then I'm going to say this dot subscribers is equal to this dot subscribers dot filter item. And I'm going to say item is not equal to the function. So we're just going to return a new list of subscribers with the function that is going to unsubscribe emitted from that list. And then finally, this is where the magic happens. We're going to have our broadcast method. And you might see the broadcast method called other things such as fire. And what they actually mean is just broadcast out to all the subscribers. Broadcast is going to take some data and then we're just going to loop through all of our subscribers and we're going to execute their function with our data. So I'm going to say for let i equals zero, i is less than this dot subscribers dot length i plus plus then I say this dot subscribers i and then we're going to execute that function with our data okay so you can see how simple an observable is let's go ahead and use this observable so you can say const observer equals new observable you can say const fn equal to and this is just our callback function, and it's going to take some data. So when our callback function is executed, it's just going to say console.log callback was executed with data. And then we can just append the data here. Next, we want to say observer.subscribe, and we want to subscribe with our callback function. Okay, so let's broadcast some data out to our observable. So I'm going to call observer.broadcast and I'm going to broadcast a message of hello from the observable. What we expect to happen is our observer be created. Then we call subscribe with our callback function and then we broadcast a message. And so we should see a message in the console that says callback was executed with data. Hello from observable. 
And that's exactly what we see. Callback was executed from data, followed from observable. So let's recreate this observable, but let's do it with a function instead because we don't like classes. So we can say function create observable equal to, the next thing we need to do is a function is going to return an object. And if you watch the previous video on factories, this syntax is going to look very familiar. This create observable is actually just a factory. I'm going to return a new object and our object is going to have subscribers. So we can get rid of our constructor now. And then I can copy our methods up into the object that's returned. And we just need some commas here because it is an object. So down where we create our observable, we don't need to use the new keyword anymore. We can just call create observable. So our code should now output it the exact same as it did before, and it does. Let's go have a look at a more practical example of observables. So I have this basic HTML page here, and I have a count that starts at zero, and I have an increment and decrement button, and we're going to write our script inside of these script tags here. Let's go over to the observable that we created before, and we can just copy and paste this code that we have. And I, of course, want to create a new instance of our observable. So I'm going to define a callback function. So I'm going to say function callback fn. And our callback function is going to take a count. And then I just want to update our count with whatever our count is in our callback function. So I'm going to say document.getElement by id count dot inner text is equal to count. The next thing I need to do is to subscribe to our observable. So I'm going to say observer.subscribe, and I want to subscribe with our callback function. And next we need to broadcast the messages. So whenever we click on the increment or decrement buttons, we want to broadcast a message with a new count. So I'm going to say document.getElement by ID inc dot add event listener. And this in itself is a observable. So whenever we so whenever we call click, we're going to broadcast a message and our observable here is going to listen for that message. So I'm going to provide the callback function here for the add event listener observable. And I want to call observer.broadcast. And I want to broadcast a new count. So I need to get the old count first. So I can say pass int document dot get element by id count dot inner text and the radix parameter is going to be 10 and then i just want to be plus one so what this is doing is we're going to get the value of count and we're going to pass it to an int and then we're going to plus one and we're going to broadcast that new count out and then our callback function is going to update the count Let's try this out and you can see we're updating the count here, but we can't decrement it. So let's just copy this function here down to a new row. And we just need to listen on the decrement button. And then we need to decrement the count by one. Try this out and you can see we can now decrement and increment. So that is a basic example of the observable pattern. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments section below which design pattern you would like to see next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.